That's a great horned owl. They live in the oak trees in my backyard and they talk to one another. I've never seen one, but I hear him. We're gonna be doing a great horned owl lesson today. I can't wait, it's gonna be fun. Welcome back. Today we are going to be making a beautiful great horned owl picture. Now, before we begin, we're gonna be gathering up some items. Today, we're gonna to actually be doing some watercolor painting. If you don't have watercolors, you can do this project just with colored pencils or crayons or whatever you have around the house. However, if you have paint, that's what I am going to be using today for my project. You're going to need a piece of watercolor paper. You're going to need a pencil. You're going to need a Sharpie marker. You're going to need an eraser, or you can use the one on the end of your pencil, a napkin, a paintbrush, watercolors, if you have them. If you don't have them, that's okay. Another option is watercolor markers. So if you don't have watercolors, you can use regular markers as long as they're not Sharpies, and we can paint this. Once we color it, we can wet it with water and turn it into watercolor. So if you don't have paint, you can use markers. Lastly, you're going to need some crayons. We're going to use crayons for a resist. Now for washing our brushes, we're going to need a little water. I keep mine in a bowl. So now I want you to gather up all these items. Look and see what I have here. And then you're going to meet me back. So reminder, you need watercolor paper or construction paper, a pencil, an eraser, a marker, if you're not using paint, a Sharpie marker, paintbrush, watercolors, and some crayons. Go ahead and pause the video and then meet me back here when you have your items. All right, welcome back. Let's get ready to do our beautiful Great Point Owl picture. So the first thing we're going to be using our watercolor paper and we want to have it vertical, which is tall. You're gonna need a pencil and an eraser. And I'm gonna be placing this photograph of my great horned owl next to my drawing so I can use it as a guide. And that way you can see it as well. So the first thing we're going to be doing is starting to create the shape of our owl. So if I'm looking with my pencil, I can see that the owl's body is going to be a big oval and his head is going to be a circle up on top. So I'm going to show you my drawing again and you'll see that when I did them, he looks a little bit different than the photograph. And I want to let you know that you can create your owl as as different as you'd like. If you want his colors to be different, you want to do him more gray, that's okay because gray horned owls come in many different shades of brown, tan, cinnamon, and gray. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to find the center of my paper as we always do. And that placement helps when I'm drawing the rest of my picture. So once I have the center of my paper, Right here, above that center, I'm going to draw a large circle for the head. And I'm moving my pencil around nice and soft. Next, I'm going to draw an oval for the body. So I'm just going to come down here and draw an oval underneath. Nice and light. All right, now one of the things that I noticed on a great horned owl, besides his name being horned, is that he actually doesn't have horns. He has these tufts of feathers that kind of stick up right here on the corner. So what we're going to do is we're gonna draw two lines coming up, almost like we're gonna get ready to draw cat ears. And then we're gonna bring it back down, just like a cat, like a skinny cat ear. We'll change that up a little bit later. And you wanna make sure these are about the same size. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna draw this wide letter V forehead right here. See how that, that 
a section of feathers comes down into the shape of a V and it extends from the tip of his ear all the way down and from the tip of his ear all the way down to make the letter V. So I'm gonna find kind of the center of the circle right here, make a dot. And I'm just gonna bring it down to here and down to here to make the letter V. Now the next part is to draw his beak. So his beak is rounded slightly up here at the top. And then it comes down to a point. The beak is not really big compared to his large yellow eyes. And I did in reading about the great horned owl, I found out that their eyes are always a bright yellow. So when I make his eyes, I'm going to come over here and right along this V, I'm going to make a large circle. And a part of the circle is going to be covered up because of the feathers that are hanging over the eye right here. And then I'm going to match it on the other side. So I'm going to come over here to this side and try to match my circle so they're about the same size. Now, as I look, I can see that one eye is bigger than the other. So I'm going to round this eye up a little bit larger. And then you're going to notice how large his pupils are. So when he is hunting in the evening time, his pupils enlarge really large so he can see better. He does not have the best vision. Actually, he does most of his hunting by his sense of hearing. Now you would think these are his ears. I thought that these were his ears, but they're not. They're just a tuft of feathers that grows up here. His ears are actually over here on the side of his head. We can't see them. So now we're gonna round up his face a little bit more and make him a little chubbier. And then we're gonna extend this curve a little wider to make his wings. I'm gonna bring it down like this. And then I'm gonna draw the other part of this one right here. I'm gonna come it around, kind of like I'm drawing a leaf and down. And his wings are very long. They come almost to the bottom of his body. I'm gonna come up here to this side and I'm gonna draw a wing that's kind of tucked behind him. So this is going to be his chest. And this is gonna be his wing that's kind of tucked behind. Now right here where I have the circle connecting to the oval of his body, we're gonna actually give him a little bit of feathers. I'm just going to kind of run my pencil softly across here and later we'll use our marker to do that. I'm going to add now another section of feathers around his eyes. So I'm going to bring this picture up a little closer so you can see what I'm going to do. If you look right here, you can see a whole section of feathers that comes around here under the beak and back around the other side. It almost forms the shape of a heart. So I'm gonna come right here and I'm going to add a little extra curve that's matching the eye. I'm gonna copy it on this side. And then I'm gonna bring it down so it's matching the point of his feet. And don't worry about it being perfect. We're going to kind of scribble scrabble it later with our marker. That's going to help to make him look even more fluffy later. So we're going to be coloring his eye with our marker later, but I want to make sure I leave a highlight. And so I'm going to make a wide letter U right here up in the 
circle in the center. And I'm going to take my pencil and lightly scribble right underneath that letter U just to remind me that that part of the eye I want to keep white and this part of the eye I want to make dark. All right, now the final part is to go right here at the bottom and decide if we want to put his talons in right here, his feet. Can you see those? So if you want to add those, all you have to do is come right to the bottom of his body. You should have a little room here at the bottom. If you don't, if you make him much larger than I made mine, that's okay. His body can go off the bottom of the paper. If you have room, you can go like this and you can form a little hook like this coming out from underneath him. See how I did that? It looks kind of like a bendy worm or finger. And then you can make a second one and you can add a claw if you would like to, or you can just keep it without the claw. So if you want to add the claw, you can. I just added a little hook. And those will be colored dark later. That's one foot. If you want to draw a part of the other foot, you can do that as well. Doing the same thing. And you can add the claw if you want to. I'm just kind of making like a curved shape. Now we want to make sure that his feet are attached to the branch. So I'm going to start right here, right under his body. And I'm just going to carry this line all the way off the edge of the paper. And then I'm going to come over on this side, matching, and make it come off. And I'm going to curve it up a little bit, because I want the branch to be wider here and more narrow this direction. Then I'm just going to start from the bottom of the paper, and I'm just going to continue this branch off edge of the paper. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. If you want to make it more detailed, you can add more branches and leaves later, but we do have a lot to draw today. So I would say keep it simple for now. We can make it more detailed later. Lastly, you're going to decide where you're going to be putting your moon, but we'll wait and do that probably with a crayon. We don't really even need to use a pencil for that because we're just drawing a circle. Okay, so now we're going to go in and we're going to get our permanent Sharpie marker. So please don't use your Crayola marker for this. I want you to make sure you're using a permanent Sharpie marker. And we're going to start to give him a little texture like feathers. So I want you to look how I did that. So this is how we're going to give him some texture. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come right here to the side of the space. And instead of it being perfectly smooth, we're gonna make it a little bit more fuzzy. So I'm just gonna go like this and kind of flick my pen down, 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 down. Notice how I'm pulling it down. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Down, 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 down. I'm giving him a little bit of wispy feathers on the side. When I get to his wing here, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm kind of outlining it, but I'm doing it real quick little wisps. I'm going whisk, whisk, whisk. I'm going to do the front of his wing the same way. And then I'm going to match it on this wing. Remember, this is the wing on the other side that's kind of tucked behind his chest. And I'm going to do the same thing for his chest. I'm going to bring it out and underneath his body. Now, right here where you get his feet, you're gonna kind of cover parts of his feet up with the feathers. Now you can do this all the way back to the wing here, or you can come from this side and bring it back this direction, whichever you're more comfortable with. Now we're gonna come up to his ears. Now we're not gonna trace, let's see, I just called them his ears. These are not his ears, they're tufts of feathers. I knew I was going to do that. Oh my goodness. Okay, so right here at the top of his head, I'm just going to very softly trace the top of his head. But I want you to look at how soft and wispy the feathers are right here. So what we want to do is we're going to just kind of bring it out like this on both sides and make those get a little bit long. And then 
instead of just drawing a straight line back, it's gonna to look too much like cat ears. We're gonna instead make it look kind of fuzzy by taking our pen and scratching it out, 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 out like that. We do the same thing on this side, scratching it out away from the top. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to come here to the point where we started, and I'm going to trace the top of his beak. And then very carefully, holding my pen straight up and down so I have a sharp line, I'm going to trace the side to come down to a point. And then I'm going to trace only part of his eye, because this part we're going to make feathery later. So I'm just going to come right here and very carefully trace his eye. And trace the other eye. This part will color yellow later. And then I'd like you to take your time on this. You're going to trace the pupil, which is going to be the black circle in the middle of his eye. You do that on both sides. And then we're going to trace that little curved line that looks like the letter U at the top. That's going to be the shiny light. And then you can very carefully color in the pupil underneath. Now, when we get ready to do this part right here, you'll notice that the feathers are overlapping his eye just a little bit and they form a perfect V right here. So we're gonna start right here. We're gonna follow that pencil line all the way up to the tip of the ear. So I'm just gonna go right here and I'm gonna go out, 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 all the way up till I get to the ear. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm just kind of scratching my pen like this. kind of makes him look angry, doesn't it? I think that the great horned owl kind of looks like he's angry, the way that his feathers come in front of his eyes like that. Now, once I've done that, we're going to trace around his face here by making this section of feathers very soft, just like what we did before on the side of his face. So we're going to continue that line around. I'm just going to go right here, scratch around, all the way down to the point, and I'm going to stop, and I'm going to start on this side the same way. I'm just kind of scratching. I'm not going to ziggy zag like this. I'm kind of scratching out, 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 and then we're going to copy that same thing right here. So however you drew those little lines underneath, you're just going to kind of scratch it, and then we're going to trace his foot. If you added a foot, if you added his Claw, you're going to be very careful to make that claw very sharp on the end. They have such strong claws or talons that they can, it would take 28 pounds of pressure to be able to separate his claws. If he's gripping onto something, it would be very, very hard for you to pull his claws open to take it out. So if he catch, catches something that he's going to eat, he can fly through the air with it. And the, whatever the thing is that he caught, you know, like a squirrel or a rat, it can't get away because his claws are so strong. His talons are very, very strong. Okay, so now I traced my little branch underneath here. Very simply, just right across. And then I'm going to add a few more lines inside of his body to make him have a little bit of pattern. So I want you to look at how I did this, exactly what we just did before with the scratching. I'm just trying to copy what I'm seeing here. So I see a little bit of black right here at the top of his head. So I added a little black at the top of his head. So I just took my marker like this and right from here, I just kind of scratched around like this. I also noticed that 
we had dark feathers right here on those tufts. So I'm gonna make that a little darker. I'm just scratching with my marker. Where else do I see dark? I see this little ring right here. It's dark around the edge. So I might want to make that a little darker around the side. I'm just going to do another layer of layer. And then look at this beautiful pattern in his wings. So here, I'm just gonna give you some freedom. So what I did is I just started scratching a few stripes across his wing. I'm gonna do some other things with crayon before we paint. So this is just our first part of adding a little pattern on the wing. It looks like the tips of his wings are pretty dark. So I might add a little bit more at the bottom. Now, in this section here, the great horned owl has many different patterns. It doesn't always look like this. This is just one picture I was able to find where he was facing forward. Most of the time, the, photos I was able to find of the great horned owl, he's sideways. And I really wanted one that was a little bit more facing forward. So for this, I just kind of played with my pen and scratched just a few little lines in sections, kind of like a section, another section, another section. So I'm going to let you kind of figure out how you want to do his chest. So I'm just going to kind of go like this. And I'm going to skip the space and do it again. Get the space and do it again. I'm not really making a perfect pattern. I'm just kind of scratching my pen in a few spots. So he's not just solid white there. We're going to add some more color later. And then right here, it looks kind of empty. So I'm just going to come in there and just throw a couple more little loose scratches in there. As you can see, I'm just kind of playing. Now, once I've finished with this part, we're going to go in and we're going to add a little bit of pattern in the branch. So I'm just going to take, you look at the photo of the branch here, it just has a little uh, kind of stripes that go through the bark. And so I'm just going to take my pen and I'm just going to go from one side to the other. And I'm obviously going to skip over the feet. And you don't want these lines perfect. You want them to kind of wibble, wobble in and out. And you could make another one match the first line above it. And then you can add a few inside. Okay, our branch is done, pretty simple. So now if you are done with your marker, we're gonna close up our marker and now we're gonna move on to our next tool. So I want you to get your magic rub eraser and we're gonna erase very carefully any pencil lines that you wanna remove before we start painting. So the only place I'm really concerned about my pencil lines are in the eyes and in the beak. So I'm just gonna kind of clean that area up a little bit. The rest of the pencil lines, I think it's just gonna look great. It'll add more texture. Okay, but before we paint, I think it would be kind of fun to go in with some crayons and add a resist. So crayons are made of wax and if we paint over them, the wax is stronger than the paint and because we're using watercolor paint and it's going to resist. So it's kind of fun to go in and scribble with a little bit of crayon. And later when we paint over it, then the crayon will pop through. So we can first start off with a little bit of brown and you can just go in 
and scribble a little bit of brown in a few random places. Now, I'm not really following any specific order. I'm just kind of scribbling up and down, maybe making a few marks over each black line. And add a little bit over here around the space. A little bit up here on the top of his head. And I'm not coloring them perfectly in because remember the paint is going to go over all of this. Just adding a few little scribbles. And then I'm going to take my brown crayon and I'm going to run it down this branch a couple times. And once I'm done with the brown, I'm going to put that color back in the box. I think I'm going to put a little bit around his face in this white part. So I'm going to change the color of that later. And you can add a little bit around there too. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put my brown back. And the next color we're going to work with is yellow. Now, before you color with your yellow, I want you to make sure it's clean on the tip because sometimes we might have colored with our yellow over black or another dark color and there might be a little bit on the tip of it. So you can just turn your paper over and just scribble a little bit on the back just to clean it before we start to use it. And then you're gonna color this part of his eye, the iris, bright yellow. I'm just doing a really bright job of that. I really want his eyes to pop. And then while I have the yellow in my hand, now you're going to decide where do you want your moon to be in the background. So, and by the way, you don't have to put a moon, but if you'd like to add a moon, because we're going to be watercoloring the background, you're going to want to use yellow and white to make that moon very bright. So later when we paint our black paint over it, it's going to show up. So you have to kind of look at the top and see where you have the most space to make a moon. And it doesn't need to be very large because it's in the distance. So just gonna color a bright yellow circle and I'll add white over it later. All right, when you're done with your yellow, you can run your yellow through the branch a few times. Put your yellow back. And then the next color we're going to look for is orange. So we're going to do a little bit of scribbling with the orange. I see a lot of orange in his feathers, don't you? Look at that. I'm going to add a little bit of orange right here at the top of his eye. If you look closely, I see a little bit of orange. And it makes the yellow kind of a golden color. So I'm going to copy that by adding a little orange right up here at the top of his eye. You might be wondering, why didn't I color his beak yellow? So I thought his beak was going to be yellow, but actually when I looked closer, it's not. It's kind of a gray. So that's why I didn't color it yellow. If you want to color it yellow, go for it. If you want to color his feet yellow, you can, but he actually has gray feet also. I'm going to take that orange and I'm going to scribble a little bit of orange in his chest. I see some orange in his chest. A little bit up in the top of his head. Definitely up on the top of the cuff with his feathers. And a tiny bit around the side, this kind of heart shaped area. And I'm going to run that orange just a couple times through the branch. And then I'm going to take my orange and put it back. Now, the next color we're going to work with is white. So this color is important because this is going to be our really strong resist color. So I'm going to show you my drawing again. This is how I got my stars, how I got that moon, how I got the highlight here on his beak. And so also a little bit in the feathers of his wings and a little bit on his chest. So if you want any highlights, you have to use this white. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color a good coat of white over my yellow moon. 
going to kind of make it more of a buttery yellow now. I'm going to color one little stripe of white down his beak, even though it's not showing, it will later. I'm going to paint that beak yellow, but that one part of white is going to show up as a highlight. Next, I'm going to take the white and just in a few places, I'm going to scribble a little bit of white. That way, when I paint over this later, I'm putting kind of firm pressure, not so much that you break your crayon. I'm the queen of broken crayons. So, oh my goodness, every single time I do one of these lessons, I end up snapping a crayon. And then the final place that you want to use white, this is important, is for stars in the sky. So we're going to be painting the sky black. So you're just going to set your crayon down and you're not going to bang it or tap it. I want you actually just to press it down and then make a very, very tiny little circle. You're just kind of pressing it and wiggling it. So it leaves a little mark of wax on the paper. And you probably won't be able to see them right now, but you will once we paint later. All right, whenever you're finished, you can go ahead and put your white crayon back in your cup. And we're gonna get ready to paint. So I'm gonna be switching out my background Paper. I have construction paper underneath me. If you don't have construction paper to use, you can also just lay some newspaper underneath you. You can also lay white paper towels underneath you. And that way when you're painting, you can go right off the edge and you won't get it on the table. You're gonna need your napkin. That's gonna be for tapping our paintbrush on. We're gonna do that a lot. I am left-handed, so all of my tools are gonna be on the left-hand side. If you are right-handed, you're gonna be putting your tools on the right-hand side. You're gonna need your water bowl and you're gonna need your paint set. Now, because I'm on camera here, I'm gonna be putting my paint on this side. I would normally not keep it over here on this side. I would have it right at the very top of my paper. But for now, I'll move it later, but for now, just so you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna place it here. All right, so here we go. First thing is, um, you can try the paintbrush that came with your paint set, but if it's got really hard bristles and it's hard to work with, you can use a, a nicer paintbrush like the ones that you might have ordered for school. If you don't have those, just use the one that came with your set. All right, so let's get ready to paint. So the first thing we're going to do is wet our brush and clean it. You never wanna leave your brush in the water because you can have a water spill if you do that. So when you're using your brush, try not to tap it on the top. You always just wanna wipe it on the side of the bowl to clean it. And the first color we're gonna do is the lightest color first. So when I'm looking at my owl picture, I wanna see what I want to color yellow. I see a little bit of orange. Now, if you did not use crayons for the eyes, you could paint this with yellow paint. But because I use crayon, the yellow is just going to float on top and it won't actually show up. But then I'm going to add a little bit of water into my yellow paint right here. Another color we're going to be using today is orange. So I want you to get a little bit of water. And look what I'm doing. I'm just going to put a couple drops of water into my orange paint. Now, if you notice, I'm not touching my brush into the paint. I'm just scooping up some water on my brush and then tilting my brush so the water drops in. Now, if I were you, I would make sure my water cup is right above my paint like this, where you're working. Most of you are gonna be right-handed. So you'll have your water right here. You're gonna be using your right hand to dip your water into the brush. And we're just putting a couple drops of water in our yellow. We're gonna be using yellow, a couple drops of water in our orange. And we're just gonna let that water sit on our watercolor paint right now. The next color we're gonna be using is brown. So if you have brown, we're gonna drop some water into your brown paint. You notice I am not touching my brush. I'm just letting the water drift into the watercolor set because we're not gonna be painting with the paint. We're gonna be painting with the water that floats on top. Now, the final color that we're going to be using is black. This is important. I don't want you to touch your brush in the black Paint. You're going to scoop up some water, 
and you're just gonna drop it onto the black paint. You see how I'm doing that? I'm not, I'm nowhere near that paint. I don't wanna get my bristles dirty yet. I will later. Now I want you to put quite a bit of drops of water in that black because we're gonna need a lot of black for that sky. Now I'm gonna scoot my water back over here to the left side because I'm a left-hander. All right, now the first thing we're gonna do is our lightest color, which is yellow. So I have some water floating on the top here and I'm not gonna stick my brush into the paint. I'm actually just gonna set my brush very gently in the water. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm not stirring it. I'm not scooping up any paint. I'm just tapping it into the water because that water has had time to mix with that paint underneath. And now I've got a little yellow on my brush and I'm just gonna brush a few little swashes of yellow around the outside edges of my bird. The other place that would be really nice to put a tiny bit of yellow, which is gonna change, it's not gonna stay yellow, it's just gonna make our brown a more golden color, is around the body. So if you're not, if you don't have enough water, Get a couple more drops in your yellow, tap your brush in it very softly, and just put a few little light strokes of yellow. Now you notice I did not use a lot of paint. This is called a watercolor painting. We want it very light. And I'm gonna rinse out my brush. I'm gonna tap it on my napkin to make sure it's clean. And I'm gonna move on to the next darkest color, which is orange. Now, make sure I have enough liquid water in my orange. I'm going to tap my brush into the orange. And then I'm going to brush a little bit of orange in a few places on my great horned owl. Now you'll notice as I'm painting, I'm just using that water. It's not a very dark color. And then I'm going to actually make it even lighter in just a minute. Right now, I'm just kind of placing some orange in a few spots. Now, once I have some orange in a couple different places on him, I'm going to show you the photograph of him again. You'll see that the orange is not really bright. It's very faded. Now, in order to fade the orange, we don't want to add white. What we're going to do is just add a big scoop of water. So I'm going to rinse out my brush and make sure my brush is really juicy with water. And I'm just going to take my brush now and I'm very softly going to thin out that orange by adding a little water to it. And I'm going to pull that orange across my owl. So now, he has a really light coat of orange. Now let's say you put way too much orange. Let me do it on purpose, just in case you messed up. Maybe you have like this much orange. You're like, oh my gosh, he looks like a pumpkin. I can show you how to fix it. The first thing you wanna do is rinse your brush and we're gonna use our brush like a sponge. Now, if we were to take our napkin and set it down here, it's gonna smear. So we don't wanna do that. Instead, we're gonna use our brush like a sponge. So I tap my brush on my napkin till it's dry and then I Scoop up the paint I don't want anymore. I wipe it on the napkin. I rinse my brush. I dry my brush. I scoop up the paint again. See how I'm taking it all off? I wipe off my brush. I rinse my brush. Tap it. Scoop up the paint until all of that big glop of paint is gone. And now you can actually see my pretty artwork through the paint it's not too dark so keep wetting your brush no more paint you're just going to kind of lighten up that orange you don't want him to look like a pumpkin and then we're going to add another color over this in just a minute and make sure none of that orange is really bright you want it nice and light and faded now if you have any puddles do the trick I just showed you about the sponge. Just dry your brush, scoop up the puddle, and wipe it on your napkin. You don't want any puddles because you know what happens when we have those puddles is all the paint starts to run together. 
All right, our next color we're gonna move on to is done yellow and orange. We also got brown wet. So now we're gonna get that water from the brown and tap our brush into it. So this color is gonna be very pretty. It's gonna be dark at first because it's been sitting there for a while, but we know how to thin it out. We're not gonna use white paint. What are we gonna use? I'm gonna use water. So right now I'm just kind of taking the water that's floating on top of the brown and I'm adding a little brown at the top of his head, on the top of feathers up here, a little bit around the side of his face. And it's looking pretty dark, so it's time to thin it out. I'm gonna rinse out my brush, tap it on my napkin. You can see it's pretty clean and make sure it's dry. And then I'm going to clean my brush one more time. So there's no brown. Now I'm gonna use this water that's in my brush to kind of thin out that brown and spread it. Now, if I have too much paint, I can scoop it off, wipe it on my napkin and get some more water and then continue to spread my brown across the paper. Now, if you have a big puddle somewhere, you'll notice that if you wipe it over to another area that hasn't been painted yet, you're not wasting that color. You can scoop it up and use it somewhere else. If the color is too dark, you can add a little water and lighten it up. If you have a puddle, you're going to dry your brush, scoop up the paint, and wipe it on your napkin. When we're done, we're going to have a really beautiful napkin, too. It's going to look like an art project. Now, when you're all finished coloring in your owl, the last part is to put a little bit of color. And we want it really watered down. So I'm going to clean my brush. And I'm just going to put a little plain water right here around his beak and his eye. Just a tiny bit, hardly any. And I'm going to grab some leftover brown and use that leftover brown. See how it's not very dark? To paint around his eyes. All right, we're almost ready to start working with our dark color, which is going to be our black. But before we do that, we have a branch that also could use some brown. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown, that water. And now if you're running out of water, add a little bit more water to your brown, and then you're gonna quickly paint your branch. And what I discovered as I was doing this is that my oil pastel, my yellow, my orange, is, and even my brown is starting to show through the paint as long as it's watery. Now, if you use too much watercolor paint and it's too thick, it's not watered down, you're not going to see those beautiful uh, crayon marks that we have underneath. I said oil pastel, but I meant crayon. You can also do this with oil pastel, but they're so thick and chunky um, that sometimes when we're doing a detailed drawing, crayon works a little better. All right, so we're saving the beak and the feet for later when we make our watery black. So you might be thinking we're just gonna grab that black and paint it all over the sky, but that's gonna be way, way, way too dark. We want to make it a much lighter black. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start with just a little bit of water and I'm gonna put it right here in the tray. So let me scoop my painting over for just a minute so I can show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a little puddle of water right here in the lid of your paint set. So I'm gonna put about 20 drops of water in here. I'm just scooping it up, that dirty water, and I'm putting it right in my lid. 
Now your lid might look different than mine. It might just be one solid lid and that's fine. The water will kind of just all roll together into a puddle. You want quite a bit of water in here because we are going to be painting all of the background with a very, very watery black. All right, so I got a lot of water in there. I got a nice big puddle. And now I'm gonna very carefully take my brush and softly set it just on the water. I don't want this really dark, just on the water. And I'm gonna set it in here. I'm gonna make a watery black. Now this should be watery that when we paint it on our paper, our paper doesn't turn dark, dark black. It's always better to have it really light and we can make it darker later. So the first thing we're gonna do with this is we're gonna very carefully paint just the bottom of the sky, right here's the bottom. So I'm just gonna run my brush and I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my brush. And while my brush is wet, I can kind of paint the sky with this watery black. You want to paint it right up to the edge. Now you can see it's not really, really dark. It's almost gray. That's okay. We can make it darker later. It'd be better to have it a little light than to have it too dark. Now I'm going to jump over the branch and I'm going to start to paint just one side all the way off the edge. You notice I'm going right off the edge. I'm just taking my brush, going right next to my owl, and I'm just brushing it all the way off the edge. Now you see that once I see my bristles separating, that means I need more liquid on my brush. I'm grabbing a little bit more paint. Now let's say your black is too dark. Add another scoop of water to it, stir it around. Or if you're running out of black paint, add another scoop of water to it. Now, if your black is a little bit too light, you can always add one more drop of that paint water this part right here into your water here. I'm just gonna paint only one side of the sky at a time. I'm painting it right off to the edge, right onto my placemat behind my paper. And I'm just doing one little section at a time right next to his face and I'm just pulling it off the edge. And as I'm doing this, try to be very gentle as you're painting. Do you notice my little stars are starting to show up too? I missed the spot there. Now I'm getting up to my moon. All right, so watch this. Because our moon is painted, did you see that? With a crayon, if I paint over it, the crayon is stronger than the paint. It resists the paint, it pushes the paint away. Now we can see our moon poking through. Now when I'm finished, I'm gonna come across the top of his head and all the way to the left-hand side to finish my painting. On this side, doing the same thing. Now if you're running out of black paint, add a few more drops of water. So this is water I'm putting in here. Add a tiny bit more black. And then you can go ahead and paint this side all the way down to the, to the bottom. Now, if your paper's starting to curl up like a, like a little, like it's wrinkling or curling up like a taquito, push your finger somewhere where it's dry. We don't want any puddles. So you notice I'm brushing my paint completely off the edge as I do this. Now I can hear a bunch of crows in my backyard right now. And this is what I learned. If you hear a whole bunch of crows talking back and forth and it's getting dark out, most of the time the crows are doing that because they're warning each other that there is a great horned owl nearby. So a great horned owl is so strong, even though he doesn't look very big, he can carry a larger animal that's even bigger than him. He, he doesn't mind fighting them to be able to um, have dinner. So they are even able to catch skunks. Key you. I don't think I would want to catch a skunk. 
Now, once your sky is all done, you can go back over the top and add one more coat of this black water up at the top. Add a little water to it if it's a little bit too dark. And you can just darken up the very top of the sky. It's a little darker at the top. And then I just add a tiny scoop of water. No more paint, just water to help blend it into the other black that I already painted. Once my sky is done, I'm almost done with my painting. Now I'm gonna use this watered down black that's in my lid. And I'm only gonna take a tiny bit on the tip of the brush. Matter of fact, I'm gonna tap my brush, watch this, on my napkin to get rid of any big globs of paint. I don't want a huge amount, so I'm gonna tap it here. See how it soaks into the napkin? Because I have to paint these two small areas, the beak, and I don't want too much paint, so I'm gonna tap my brush. And you'll notice my beak is not turning jet black. It's just kind of like a light gray, just like the photograph. And I have a little bit of white that's popping through because I used the crayon there. I'm gonna take a little bit of that paint water. I'm gonna tap it on my napkin again for these little toes. And I'm gonna paint his toes so now at the very end, you can finish just like this, or you can add a little shadow. So watch this, I'm gonna take that watery black, I'm gonna make it a little bit more watery by adding a couple more scoops of water into it. No more paint, just water. I'm gonna spin it out, and now this, can make a cool shadow. So watch this. We can take this and we can run it along the side of his wing here. And then that watery black, I can run it on the side of his face here and under his chin. Oops, I went a little too far. There, washed it away with water. So I made a little shadow under his chin. Using that watery black, I can put a little bit of shadow up on the top of his head and on the top here. And because it's so watery, it's not very dark, just kind of light. I can add some shadows on this side of his body. I can add a little shadow at the bottom of him. Right here, I'm just gonna wiggle my brush across the bottom. And then I'm gonna make a little shadow on the branch right underneath his bottom right here. See what I'm doing? And underneath his toes. And then finally, you can take your black and run it along the bottom of the branch. The black water, not the black paint. Well, I hope you had fun painting a great horned owl with me today. I had fun teaching you. And I will see you for our next lesson. Have a wonderful day.